She has been honored for her business accomplishments and philanthropy as a board member of the following institutions. As a 2011 inductee in the Rogers University African American Alumni Hall of Fame, President Clinton's transition team, and United States Trade Advisory Committee, the Constituency for Africa, and the 2001 Class of Henry Crown Fellows at the Aspen Institute. And she is a member of the Sam E. Jonah School of Business Advisory Council. Let's offer a warm AUCC welcome to our keynote speaker, Ms. Judith Adu. Please put your hands together for her. Thank you, thank you very much. Good morning. This is a very energetic bunch, so before I start my formal remarks, I want to give you a chance to let out some of that energy. I want you to clap for yourselves, for your families, for your professors, for the head table here. An amazing accomplishment. The 10th graduating class of AUCC is not a small thing, so I acknowledge you. Uh, thank you for this honor. I've had many opportunities in my life, but I think this is the first time I've ever spoken at a college graduation. So I am honored and humbled to be here today. And I thank Honorable Kojo Yanka and all the dignitaries here, all protocols observed. Um, it's beautiful to see you all. And I don't know because of all of your excitement if you were able to hear some of the comments that were made earlier, both by Honorable Kojo Yanka, by Professor Arma, by the young lady who spoke who's nine years ahead of you all. There were some tidbits in there that if you can, even just for a few minutes, try and glean, since you're spending the time before you receive your diplomas, try and glean something from this time. The last little bit, right? Glean, yeah? You like that word? I'm a wordsmith, so I like words. I'm a lawyer. And I should mention, in, in terms of seniority, I'm a year ahead of Michelle Obama, the uh, first lady of the United States at Harvard Law School. And uh, it is amazing to me what can happen in 30 years. It doesn't seem like, well, I graduated in 1987 from Harvard Law School, but I graduated from college in 1984, 30 years. Some of you are not 30 in this room or in this <laughs> gathering. I think most of you are not 30. So it's amazing to me what can actually happen in 30 years. So I want to just share a few quick thoughts with you. I know it's been a, a long morning, and I want you to... I just want to share with you just a quick, quick number of thoughts. So first thing is, perspective is everything. What you see and appreciate depends so much on where you stand in the world. And where you stand and what you stand for and who you stand with are all the choices that are going to be critical to your success going forward. Not only for you, but actually for Ghana and Africa and the world. So I want you to really think seriously about that. Who are you? Where do you stand? What do you stand for? It's very important in a young country like Ghana. It's important everywhere in the world, but particularly for a young country like Ghana and for a continent like Africa that will double in the next 25 years. So the same time that I've been out of law school, the continent of Africa will double in population in that same period of time. It's actually an extraordinary thought. So we're gonna need people who can think, who can communicate, who can plan, who can execute, who can do great things for the right reasons. Not just for money, for the right reasons. We need visionary leadership right now. So I wanna to speak to you from that perspective, okay? So I wanna also just say to you, congratulate you on making an ex excellent choice by selecting AUCC as a university. It's not a small thing. It shows vision already. I took the time to study carefully what AUCC stands for. It's very specific, it communicates very clearly what it stands for. You see it in its branding, you see it in the cloth, the, the, the uh, cultural performers we have here, uh, and the entire event, we see it, it's alive. It's not just words, it's alive. So first thing it says is committed to the pursuit of excellence. We've heard it mentioned before today, I mean uh, many times today. It's committed to critical and independent thinking. This is for, for media people and business people. 
If you're not an independent thinker, I don't know how you're going to make a difference. And if you're not going to make a difference, why are you doing the work? Very important. Creativity and innovation. We're gonna, we don't, nobody knows how to have the population of Africa double in our lifetimes, 25 years. Nobody knows how to provide for that. So we need creativity and innovation in order to provide housing, food, water, electricity. Massive changes are gonna occur in Ghana too. We're gonna double 50 million people in 25 years. We're gonna have to think outside of the box in order to deal with that, to make the most of it. So this is a time for you. So I, actually, I wish I were your age now. Stronger, younger, more, less, less fearful, better knees. This, it also stands for respect. AUCC stands for the Respect for African Cultural Values. Why is that important? In the days of Kim Kardashian and uh, all kinds of things, I wonder, Jay-Z, I wonder when I see people mimicking American culture, specifically black American culture, all over the world, not just Ghana, everywhere. In India, everywhere I go, I see people rapping, dressing a certain way, speaking a certain way. <laughs> exactly. But I think actually in Africa, our competitive advantage is that everybody in the world comes here to find our culture. You can't get it anywhere else. When you walk in New York, if any of you have been there, you have cousins there, you can clap because this is serious business. Our culture, nobody can take it. Only we can give it away. We can actually, I find it interesting that when I'm walking around in Brooklyn, New York, I see people with adinkra symbols on, as tattoos. I see people with names like Kofi and Ama, and they, they change their names legally to identify with African culture. So I'm, I'm interested to see how do young people think of culture? How are you going to use a culture, our precepts, our teachings, our grandmothers, our, our, our customs, how are we going to use it as we go forward? I want you just to think about that. The last thing it stands for, a uh, big thing it stands for, is service to the community. You can make a lot of money, and I hope you all do. I love money. I love capitalism. I believe in it as a tool. But I believe it as a tool not just for me. If we can't make money and change our country, our nation, our continent, we're wasting our time. I want you to really think about this, because I'm reading a lot in the newspapers, many of you maybe, or many AUCC graduates and others are writing about, it's almost like this moment in history here where money and values are in question. So since you're the graduating class, the 10th graduating class of AUCC, I want you to think seriously about what it means to serve. Serve family, friends, of course, immediate community, but the nation, if we're doubling in 25 years, service to the community could never be more important. I want you to just consider this. These aren't just words. These are precepts. If you can live by the precepts that AUCC has tried to inculcate in your lives, you will be extremely successful. I'm willing to bet you. I'm actually willing to guarantee you this. I can tell you from my own personal and professional experience, if you really apply these principles, not just read them, talk about it, write it on a sheet of paper, but apply it over and over and over again in your life, purposefully, in real time every day, you will be extraordinarily successful, both to your family, your country, and the world at large. So with that, I'm just saying a few other quick things. One that's important to me is that words are seeds. Take them very, very, very seriously. If you water them diligently with, with discipline and purpose and courage, courage, it's a time for courage, you can actually shift the course of time, of life. You can. So words can grow stories. Stories can feed the heart and the soul and the mind of a people, often for generations. This is why what you see when you look at the world matters. This is why the words we choose are so critical and why the business of words is so powerful and so lucrative. Now you heard earlier that I'm an investor. I've been investing in media and telecommunications for over 15 years. I've made money and I've lost money. Timing is everything. But I can tell you one thing, the richest man in the world uh, one of the richest men in the world, you may remember, Ross Perot ran for president many, many years ago in the United States. And he was a billionaire. 
And at one time he decided instead of just having a commercial, he wanted to speak to the American people for 30 consecutive minutes and really lay out his vision for the nation. And he, most people didn't want to take his money, but CNN, then a fledgling institution, said it would take its, his money. And at the time, the most he could buy, he could afford to buy, was 30 minutes of time. So that got me thinking, if one of the richest men in America wants to run for public office and can only afford to pay 30 minutes of time, what's more powerful, money or media? Media. He who controls the mic controls the mind. So you have to, as media professionals or as business people, possibly looking at the media, you have to be serious about how you hold that mic, how you treat it, how you use it. It will change our nation and our world. So this is a time for courage and integrity and discipline and purposefulness, or purpose rather, okay? So I want to just quickly uh, end with a few things. I know we've missing, we're missing time. There's so many people still to, to share with you some thoughts. But I wanted to give you some things that I learned at Goldman very quickly, so I'm going to move ahead. One I mentioned early, timing is everything. And a very important entrepreneur, one of the wealthiest Africans I met in my entire life, his name is his late now, his name is Miko Wayatari from Congo. And he got the first provisional cell phone license in Africa. At the time, President Mobutu gave him that license. And when I met Miko, he told me that he went to all the rich people in Congo, said, give me small money to make this cell phone company successful. Nobody could see it. They, didn't, they couldn't do it. The people had lots and lots of money. He didn't, wasn't asking, I think he was asking for $250,000, which at that time wasn't that much money. Maybe now in Ghana, too. I think it's a car. I see people driving Bentleys around here these days. So at the time, it wasn't very much money. But nobody could hear his vision. They couldn't see what he saw. Fast forward, 20 years later, he had 12 licenses. He, was, he sold his company for half a billion dollars. He made several millionaires. That to me is the biggest thing. There are a lot of people in Africa who've made a lot of money. How many people can say they made tens of millionaires with them? They didn't just make money. Literally dozens of people made millions with them. They employed thousands of people. They transformed millions of lives. He touched more lives than most governments an entrepreneur who couldn't get $250,000 15 years earlier. That tells you something. To make this thing happen, you've got to be brave. You've got to have fortitude. You have to have perseverance. You have to have a vision that no matter what anybody says, you're going to go forward, even if it's step by bloody step. Very serious. Very, very serious time. The second thing I want to talk about is this issue of uh, proactivity and acting creatively with information. Again, when you read the newspaper, what are you seeing? Are you entertained? Are you informed? Are you thinking about business? Are you talking about changing the world? What are you doing? When you, I want to mention another issue, this issue of building and maintaining relationships. Some of the relationships you formed here at school are going to be critical to you going forward. My, I talked to many people that literally that I know from school from th over 30 years ago. They helped me today. They are the people that are in leadership today. And by the way, I didn't mention that I went to Wesley Girls High School. So that to me, I take it very seriously. Thank you very much. I believe in Wesley Girls High School. Everything that I, I think the greatest education I got was from Wesley Girls, not from Harvard. I studied the hardest at Wesley Girls. I think it was the most competitive intellectually. The people were serious, we had vision, and we wanted to be excellent. I still depend on those relationships today, and my sisters from Wesley Girls have been very helpful to me during my life, both personal and professional life. I want to just uh, say one other thing here, and that is this issue of short-term greedy versus long-term greedy. At Goldman, they had, a, they had a phrase, Goldman is an investment bank, meaning they make money from money. We take money, we provide advice, and we help people solve problems. What they told me is that the bigger the problem you can solve, the more money you can make. So people can small, solve small problems, make a little bit of money. People can solve medium-sized problems, can make a medium amount of money. And people can solve very large problems, can make lots and lots and lots of money. So learn to solve big problems. We have to change the way we operate.